Hello, everybody, and welcome. This is Adrian. Thank you so much for joining me today. It's going to be time for some uh, Victory 2 with HFM as India. So, uh, last we left off, we turned into India. We lost our colonies, unfortunately, in uh, in Australia. It's very sad. Very, very sad. <clears throat> um, I was a bit of a salty spittoon, and uh, I was kind of mad that we, we lost that war. I think we should have probably won that war, but oh, well, it's, it's war under the bridge. It is over. In the meantime, we are going to uh, industrialize the shit out of our country. Uh, right now, we're working on administrative efficiency in most of our states, and we're just trying to get some more states and things like that. I think we're going to be we're going to be making some states here, hopefully, pretty soon. Uh, we need more like bureaucrats in in these states here. We're working on administrative efficiency here for a lot of these states and stuff. And and uh, but anyway, we're in yep. So yeah, so um, it's the year eighteen ninety nine. So we are. Quite a bit ahead of when India historically would have formed. Um, that's okay though. I mean, it's it's whatever. <clears throat> we're probably going to go on a conquest a conquest spree. Actually, um, I think we're going to invade. I kind of I think I'm going to invade this dude, this this little guy right here, and we're going to probably probably simultaneously take on Nepal and Bhutan. Probably kill those guys. Um, yeah, establishing a protectorate is only five war score. So we'll be fighting Nepal and Bhutan. Well, Nepal and Bhutan. Technically, I wish they were satellites. Why are they not? Hmm. They're in my sphere, though, so maybe, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Anyway, our, our administrative spending, our spending is down on, on most of our goods. Let's see if we can bring that back up. We're just going to go on speed 5 for a bit. Um, okay, so spending definitely isn't where it should be, unfortunately. We make a shit ton of money off of landowners. My god. There's no capitalists, so we don't make any money there, but wow. Spending is crazy. I don't really want... Yeah, I don't want... Um, for now, then, we'll, we'll keep the military maintenance down because... Um, we do want... We don't want our factories to be starved out to just, you know, all their cash. And I, I want to industrialize more. I'm trying to work on our... On our... Um, you know, our, our administrative... Spending and, and so hopefully that'll go well. Um, yeah, I think we're I think we're probably going to invade this guy here. We'll see if we can get Nepal and Bhutan. Um, I don't know, maybe an invasion of Tibet would be kind of cool. And then the Qing Empire is a great power, so he's he's kind of strong. We are allied to him though, so that's cool. We're working on the steam turbines right now, and then we're we're gonna try and just work on on some of these techs here. Um, I think definitely going for associationism. I think that's actually how. The British were doing so well in their war was because they could reinforce troops a lot faster than we could because we didn't have this reinforcement plus five percent from any of these techs, and then probably prestige would be a nice nice thing to do too. So let's just work on some industrial techs for now. Our literacy is increasing slowly but surely. We've got two point four percent of our population is intellectuals, which considering our adult male population is fifty six million people, that is a shit ton. Two point four percent of your population is intellectuals, out of a population of fifty six million adult males, that is a fuck ton. That's a lot of people. God, I'm not really sure. I'm not really sure why. Seriously, man, India in the in the real world should be like a superpower. Just how many people they have. I think honestly, what it is is the government form. I think there's there's something about administrating India that's just very very difficult in the country because you have so many people. How on earth can you have you know enough bureaucrats, enough cops, enough teachers, things like that? It, I think that's what what's what's going on. But you know, I, I don't know. I'd probably have to do some more study into it. A lot of people say actually that it's. It's imperialism that is is responsible for a lot of the problems in India. Just things related to imperialism just makes the country, you know, has affected the country adversely. Uh, I don't know. I don't know how much I buy that argument, actually, because, um, well, maybe it's true. I don't know. I'd have to do more studying on it. You know, um, I'd have to do more study. Let's see what's going on here. Asian farms and mines. Okay. An end to natural dyes. Discovery of man-made synthetic dyes in the mid-19th century triggered a long decline in the large-scale market for natural dyes. So we can change stuff to tropical wood? Cool. Encourage Arab nationalism? Interesting. All right. Great Malaysia adopted two nation theory. It has invented mass politics, clot, naval women's suffrage. Okay. Where's Kunduz? Where is that guy? Oh yeah, it's up here. All right. So we're allied with the Qing and allied with the Germans. And that's about it. Cool, we got rubber and cochin. Dope. 
All right, so administrative spending is going up a little more. Qing Empire, the War of Chinese Freedom of Education against Guangdong. Where is he? The stirrings of Indian nationalism. The people in India are diverse, consisting of numerous cultures and languages throughout the subcontinent. Interesting. We're getting a nationalist agitation, apparently. So not all of our... Hmm. So not all of our population is accepted. I mean, we have a lot of... Yeah, that's actually right. Yeah, Nepali, English, Vadi, Marathi, Rajput, Bihari, Bengali, Kanaji... Punjabi, Kashmiri, Manipuri, Assamese, and Oriya. So yeah, not all of those cultures are accepted. Like, it looks like Telugu is not. Uh, Kannada, I don't think is. Tamil isn't. Malayalam isn't. Uh, I don't think I don't think I saw Sinhala in there. Uh, Asian Minor is also not in there. So it looks like only like the northern-ish parts are accepted cultures, not the southern. And, and that actually makes a lot of sense, because believe it or not, the history of India, the, there's like these groups down here, the Tamil, the Kannada... Uh, the Tamil, the Malayalam, all those guys are actually not the same language or, you know, culture, quote, quote, culture, as, as these people in the north. There's actually, like, there's, like, a division between the guys in the east, the guys in the south, the guys in the north. Kind of issue, like, the northwest. It's, it's a fascinating history, really. If you guys read about it, it's just, it's really cool. Um, it's just these, these distinct, diver ooh, we have oil, fuck yeah. There's just, there's, there's a distinct group of, of, you know, cultures and stuff that exists between, like, the Northwest, the Northeast, and the South. It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool stuff. It's a uh, very complicated history, though. Um, I wonder. I kind of want, I want to cut back these rich taxes. Damn, so we're getting rubber and stuff, too. That's pretty cool. Guangdong. So Hong Kong goes back to the Chinese. Okay. So yeah, so I want to I want to cut these taxes because I want more capitalists to to kind of come about, you know, to be able to do their own thing. Let's see, a Telugu rebellion, uh, Telugu rebellion. Oh. Mm. Whatever, we should assemble the army. Yeah, so we're at number eight in the world. We need more industrial power. We need more military power. We need more prestige. I think prestige is actually probably the big thing. Um, if we had more prestige, we'd probably be doing a lot better on things. So, for now, since we're doing okay on industry, let's actually go over here and come over here to Romanticism and, um, Associationism. We'll see if we can... So, ooh, we get rubber. We'll see if we can we can help out with that. Right now, we're producing wool, wood, tea, fruit, and grain. What do we import? Regular clothes, wine, and furniture. Okay. So, preferably, I'd be... So, preferably, we would, we would have, yeah, regular clothes factories. So, let's see if we can just get a couple of those. Textile mill, luxury clothes, luxury furniture. What about a furniture factory? I think that's it. Oh, we'll throw in a, we'll throw in a winery in there. And uh, maybe a glass factory shirt right now. That's an Indian Madras. That's in, that's in one of our... Um, that's one of our, our nice primary states. So, we're, yeah, these bureaucrats, it's, I mean, it's going, it's just, it's going to take a while, because, holy shit, we can mobilize 223 brigades of our poor citizens, my god. That is, like, 750,000 men, which is actually nothing compared to, like, historically what, what, you know, like, Germany or the UK could do. I mean, like, like, like think about it, dude, it's actually really crazy when you really think about it. The amount of men that Germany has mobilized for both World War One and World War Two is fucking mind-boggling. I think for I think for World War One, it was like nine or, or twelve million people, you know, throughout the course of the war. And then in World War Two, I think it's a total of like seventeen to twenty-five million people served in the German Wehrmacht. You know, that is a shit ton of people. So like the fact that we can mobilize two hundred twenty-four brigades. That is supposedly only, like, we can mobilize 16% of our poor strata into so soldiers. 16% of our poor strata. Uh, mobilization to pack 300% from post-war policy, which limits the amount of mobilized units to 448, but a current amount of raised regiments is 112 multiplied by 300%. Ah, okay, so it's only 300% of your pro, uh, 300% of your currently mobilized units. Oh, okay, that's interesting. Interesting. I don't know. That's crazy. It's crazy, man. And we're going to go for uh, rehabilitation, hopefully. So assimilation rate and immigrant attraction is going to increase. Yeah, I want the army at full spending. 
Let's go ahead and get this army here. We've got two, three, there's actually too many cavalry here. The one thing about India that pisses me off is they're so... Yeah, let's actually go ahead and declare war on this guy. The one thing about India that, that makes me mad is that there's there's so many soldiers and stuff that actually organizing your armies properly is actually really, really tedious. Um, it's it's really kind of annoying, actually. So I, I wish that was not that way, but it is. So let's go and conquer this guy. Do we accept Burmese? Probably not. No, so we don't accept Burmese. Uh, but we'll go ahead and invade anyway. That's fine. Yeah, we're going to establish protectorate. That's fine. We've got enough infamy. We're, we'll do just fine. You know, we'll, we'll, not too many issues. Damn it, we were instantly discovered. Fuck you. Oh, bastards. Yeah, this actually, this army should needs more. Um... Need more artillery. Artillery is expensive, too. We can create a state in the United Provinces. Excellent. Let's see, Asian farms and mines. Yes. So we're going to take this guy over primarily because he's got precious goods and he's actually got tropical wood, which would be good for us. Let's actually, um, let's get this army here. So we have eight inventory here. Let's do... Eight artillery, two engineers, two dragoons. Okay, we can create a state out of West Bengal. So once we once we create some of these states, we should be getting some more. Um, we're going to be getting some more um, factories, which is good, which is what we need. West Bengal. And administrative efficiency is just it's going up. Slowly but surely. 54.1% literacy. I'm actually thinking, you know what it is? It's it's easier, I think, for any of your states. Oh, the death of Queen Victoria. Jesus. Queen Victoria, whose 63-year reign was the longest in British history, came to an end at her state Osborne House on the island of all Isle of Wight in 1901. Damn. Yeah, so you know what it is? I think education, your your literacy increases more quickly the more states you have. Which yeah, that ha that actually has to be what it is. You know, you don't even necessarily need cores. You just need to... Yeah. You don't even need cores. I think you just necessarily need to have administrative spending so that your intellectuals can run a better school system. I think that's what it is. Um, which, which actually makes sense because... Okay, so it's fluctuating quite a bit. Let's see what we can do. We're still making a lot off of these guys here, but I'm just, I'm trying to encourage capitalists, so I don't want to tax them as much. I wish I, I wish I could give these guys state support, actually, but. Hmm. We're already subsidizing everybody. What's the electorate vote right now? We're still, well, we're actually not as conservative as I thought we were. Hmm. We may have to change this. Yeah, I definitely need more artillery. Um... Let's see, China. You're are you allied with Vietnam? You are. Can I take over Vietnam? Mm, almost. Luang Prabang. We might yeah, we might actually do something to Luang Prabang. What about Vietnam? We could we could actually try and get um I could try and take Vietnam from the French, but know, I'm not convinced that's a good idea. Not necessarily anyway. Yeah, so I'm pretty sure your sphere members cannot go to war with you. That's that's always what I thought it was. I think that's just like that's just a general rule. Uh, we'll go for limited citizenship. Oh, uh, actually, you know what? That, yeah, that's right. This nationalist party actually wants residency. Okay, so we should we should actually change this. We don't want to go for limited citizenship. That's going to encourage um, liberals, which would not be good. What are the liberal, what are what are the liberal policies actually? Independence party, protectionism, laissez faire, pluralism, full citizenship. And pacifism? No, pacifism would be bad for us. Yeah, we don't want that. Let's see, tea production, coffee output. Yeah. So we want to be getting great power. We want to work on some uh, some prestige gain. Uh, we'll actually probably go for this as well, phenomenology and hermenology. That was in 1890, but that's that's fine. Uh, we're going to go for state capitalism, actually. That'd be pretty good. Ooh, rubber. Yes. 
We need rubber. What? Oh, I thought it said Portuguese Mexico. I was like, holy fuck. Yes, moralism movement. Maybe I should be cool to invade this guy. Yeah, he's protected by the US, but mm, I don't know. I think it'd be kind of useful to actually have Thailand. Yeah, what's going on with the Japanese, actually? Let's take a look at that. So they're in Shogunate Japan. So Shogunate Japan has taken over most of Korea. Not all of it, though. He's at war with Korean nationalists. I wonder if we should protect him. That'd be kind of interesting. What the hell? I can invest in China? Is he not a great power? Wow, he's actually not a great power. He's a secondary power. Weird. Alright. I thought he was actually a great power. Okay, so we still have conservatism power, which is good. Yeah, so actually now that we're now that we're India, we're actually gonna go pretty crazy, man. We're gonna we're gonna take out some people. The Tangier Protocol, ooh, all right, this is gonna be fun. So, 1901, the great powers of Europe assembled together to decide the fate of Morocco and its sultan with the Tangier Protocol. The French government proposed the creation of a 373 square mile, uh, kilometer international neutral and demilitarized zone centered on the city of Tangier and temporal powers and jurisdiction of the natives to the Moroccan sultanate. Our sultan. However, negotiations broke down and no consensus was reached. Yeah, so so the Moroccan this is what they call the Moroccan crisis. Actually, it's it's pretty interesting. So basically, Portugal, like the French and stuff like that, and, the, and Spain, they wanted a little bit of Morocco over here. And the UK was was kind of sort of aligned to France, and, and you know, they were kind of also trying to balance things out with the Germans and, and things like that. And um, basically, Spain and Portugal and France and stuff, they were going to kind of pressure the Moroccan Sultanate into basically acquiescing to, to Western demands and, you know, Western influence. And Germany was basically like, you know what, dude, I don't think that's a good idea. We want to stand with the Moroccan Sultan. I think he deserves to be, you know, in our sphere of influence. And so there was kind of this standoff between France and Germany and the UK was like, fuck, dude, that's not good. You know, and so the UK was trying to defuse the situation and the Germans... Because the Germans were trying to compete with the Royal Navy, and so the Germans had embarked on this huge-ass shipbuilding program, trying to get, you know, a Navy that could compete with the Royal Navy. The German Army, or the German Navy sent ships over to Morocco to try and intimidate the French, and the UK were like, dude, we're not fucking having it. And so, people say the Moroccan crisis is what definitively put the UK and the French against an alliance... Um, in an alliance against the Germans, actually, which is, which is really interesting. Moroccan crisis is actually pretty, pretty important. Um, in case we're training up, wow, dude, 476 brigades of our po poor population is crazy. I wonder, I wonder if I can get this guy out of, um, out of American influence. I'm not sure. Maybe. Damn, 13% attrition here. Holy shit. Okay, so spending's on the max. Taxes for the rich are low, which is good, because I think that's helping us... Yeah, that's helping create some, some capitalists, which is really good. Yeah, and then administrative spending is just kind of... Just taking its time. Let's go move these men. Let's go move this army over here. So we need... Artillery. Calcutta is still our military rally point. Damn, dude, that attrition is crazy. Yeah, so literacy is increasing actually pretty quick now. Oh, it's glorious. You know, fortify this position. Some forts. I wish fort. I wish building forts was actually not so tedious either, but it is. It's it's very tedious. So oh well. Sure, Bhutan. Sure.
So we're going to make states. We're basically going to make as many states as we can. And then we're going to try and industrialize like pretty heavily. Let's go for, what was that? That was Bihar, I think. Yeah, I think so. Adirabad. I'm not really sure where this, this pops up every time. Every time we create a new state, but whatever. Yeah, so, yeah, so now now that we are getting more and more states, our literacy is increasing. Look at this, dude. Right, it's, it's increasing super fast. Holy God. That's what we were, that's what, that was, that's what was our problem, was we didn't have states. And that makes a lot of sense, actually. It makes a lot of sense. Wait, really? We have cores on Kalat? In Belugistan? Whoa, dude. That's interesting. I wonder if we should actually conquer some of these dudes. Because these guys are in a sphere. These guys are also satellites, so I don't really mind. I wish we could actually get, like, some sort of... Ooh, War of British Aggression against Orange. Oh, see? I knew it. Yeah, this is the Boer Wars. This is what affected us in the last playthrough. Damn, dude. Africa looks fucked up. Good luck, Boers. You probably have some better luck than I did. Damn, looks beast. Who's at war over here? We got rebels. Siamese reactionaries. Ooh, we're actually going to hope that these reactionaries succeed, because if they succeed and Siam gets taken out of the sphere of influence of the Americans, we will invade. Yeah, we're going to be a, a nationalist in Indian power. I was actually kind of thinking, like, maybe what if we just stayed as a minority empire of the East Indies, but I, I figured it, the game wouldn't probably be as fun if we weren't, because we, were, we were handicapped by the fact that we didn't have states or accepted pops in our, in our nation, so. So I thought it wouldn't be as fun. Holy shit, dude. Look at this. 508 brigades. We can mobilize 1.5 million through mobilization. That's insane. Uh, are these rebels going to win? Damn it. Damn, dude. Look at that literacy. Look at that literacy. Ugh. It's fucking glorious. Yes, yeah, so the upper house is decisively controlled by liberals. Well, socialists, to be perfectly, to be perfectly fair. Communist Party, the National Congress, the Boon Jam. We will. Industrialize and modernize India. Look at that. Look at that literacy. I'm actually not sure what the literacy rate of India is right now. I'd have to look. It probably um it's probably pretty formidable though. Ooh, the Olympic Games. Yeah, I'd have to I'd have to definitely look. Uh, I'm not sure what it is, actually. Let's see, what are we gonna go for next? Social science. Um, I think we might actually go for this first, yeah. Research points, yeah, plus 100%. We'll work on that. Yeah, the Navy will probably never be up to par with the Navy for this entire game. I mean, maybe we could, I don't know. We're, we're gonna, literacy and stuff is, is progressing pretty quickly here, but I do think the British are probably permanently gonna have, um, ooh, there's Australia. I think the British will probably permanently have, um, you know, they'll be doing better than us. Okay, so there's Australia. Yeah, so we, we had our chance to take Australia, but it's gone now. You know what we could do, though? Is we could theoretically take some stuff from the Netherlands, actually. I could probably take the East Indies from them. Um, I'd have to probably form... I'd have to either release the nation of Ustindi, which actually wouldn't be too bad. It's probably, it's probably a good idea. Yeah, because then Ustindi would get, would get cores over here, or we just take it ourselves. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven... Like eight, yeah, that's that's quite a bit of territory to take. Yeah, I'm not sure if Indonesia, Indonesia doesn't yet have cores here, because Indonesian nationalism probably hasn't popped up. But that'd be kind of cool. So is our industrial power rising? I think it is. Just naturally, people are being hired by the factories. Like look at Indian Madras. Holy shit, we've hired all these people in Indian Madras. That's excellent. It's a crisis of some kind. Um, we'll support the Germans. The Brits and the Russians will support probably the... Or the uh, French and the Russians will probably support the UK. Actually, no, the Russians might support us. Cool. Wow. 
Whoopsies. Did not mean to be taking attrition here. Let's actually grab another army. The Heart of Darkness. Damn it. Yeah, can I get can I get the American influence out of here? Maybe. Maybe. It might be possible actually. If I can get these guys out, out of the sphere of the Americans, then um, we will invade, I think. I might be able to do it, actually. Motherfucker, these guys keep discrediting me, though. Hmm. I mean, even then, I actually probably could fight the Americans. Whoa, dude, holy god, they went on a conquest spree. Yeah, it's actually mostly their soldiers and their leaders. They actually don't really have that many capital ships. Technically, well, I mean, I don't really have any capital ships either, to be honest, so. Yeah, I don't know. I, I think it'd be easier to fight the Americans than anything. For, for Siam, probably. I mean, it'd be an annoying thing to do so, but, you know. Oh, this was in 1880? Damn. That was a long time ago. We probably should have gotten that a long damn time ago. Holy crap. Look at that industrial power. Look how how quickly it's rising. That is just excellent. I love it. Yeah, we're trying to I'm trying to reduce our reliance on on regular clothes. Cuz uh it's interesting actually. The 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 system of Victoria 2 uh, is there going to be a crisis for this? Are we going to go to war with the Brits? Fuck. I guess so. Eh, too lazy to fight with them. We'll let the Germans deal with it. The Germans actually probably could, could invade England just fine. Oh, that's right, Austria's involved in this. Oh yeah, the Germans are going to be just fine. They're, they're going to kick some ass over here. Why is their army not that large though? That's weird. The Germans should have a lot more men than this. I guess they're mobilizing now. Jesus, dude, the Germans are so beast. This guy's kick some serious ass. I'm I'm just there for moral support. Don't worry, Germans, you'll be fine. They'll do just fine. Great wars. Ooh. We have before us an ordeal of the most grievous kind. Who have before us many months many months of struggle and suffer, you ask? Suffering. We have before us many, many months of struggle and suffering. You ask, what is our policy? I say it is to wage war by land, sea, and air. War with all our might and all the strength God has given us, and to wage war against a monstrous tyranny never surpassed in the dark and lamentable catalog of human crime. That is our policy. You ask, what is our aim? I can answer in one word. It is victory. Victory at all costs. Victory in spite of all terrors. Victory however long and hard the road may be, for without victory there is no survival. I swear to God, Winston Churchill said that. Motherfucker, this is a great war. Alright, there we go. Interesting. Great war capitulation. Alright. I mean, still, there's not much I'm gonna do. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You guys are on your own, dude. <laughs> Have fun. Have fun. Have a good time. I mean, Austria is going to get wrecked. Absolutely just shit upon. Like, donkey doo-doo on your chest shit. <laughs> you know. Damn. Look at that, dude. 
Damn. <laughs> we are now number one in the world for a great power. That is just a poo poo platter dump on the chest, man. Just smearing it all over the place, dude. Hmm. Yeah, what if we try and try and do something with Korea? Who knows? It'd be interesting if we seize. What if we see? Whoa! What happened to? Um, what happened to him over here? What's up with Spain? Spanish conquest of Tripolitania against the the Netherlands? Holy shit! The Netherlands have three hundred and sixty-eight military power. Where the hell did that come from, dude? They're capital ships. Damn, they must have a really powerful navy. Jesus Christ! Have you guys seen this? Ooh, the third way. You fascist now. The Unity Party. Protectionism, state capitalism, moralism, residency, jingoism, paternalistic. Oh, dude, that's beast. <laughs> dude, what if we went fascist to action? It'd be kind of interesting. I wonder. I wonder if I could actually pull it off. I wonder. Uh, all right, let's try it. Yeah, fascist party loyalty towards fascism. Let's see. That's actually those are some really good policies, dude. Protectionism, state capitalism, moralism, residency, jingoism, and paternalistic welfare policy. That is fucking raw. That is super raw. Plus, fascists are inherently conservative, sort of, kind of. At least in this game, fascists will vote with conservative blocks. It's kind of weird, but that's what they do. Damn, two Sicilies. What the hell? Wait, what? The Kingdom of Italy still has not taken over the two Sicilies, or were they released from, from somebody in a war? They might have been released, actually. Motherfucker. Holy living shit. It's gonna get real interesting really fast. What is wrong with you, Spain? You went to war for Tripolitania? Are you serious? You got some balls, buddy. I don't know what his problem is, but whatever. Wow, we have a lot of people leaving our country. Yeah, we actually still have 13% reactionaries. That's pretty crazy. Atheism. Towards moralism. Yeah, so it's going to be a block between, like, the nationalists. The nationalists. The, the conservatives and the, um, the fascists, probably. It's really interesting. These areas are decisively conservative, though. So, well, we're, we're affecting this one. Communist riot? No. No communists. Damn it, Serbia. Why is everybody not paying their debts, you bastards? There's a bunch of cheap sons of bitches. Interesting. Yeah. Well, I'm actually still gonna... Let's, let's still focus on these states for now. <laughs> That's what I need to focus on. I need to focus on making states so we can get some industrial power. But, uh... We'll come back to promoting fascism later. But we have a lot of people that are leaving, actually. My god. I wonder why. Yeah, farmers, craftsmen, laborers. Interesting. San Francisco earthquake of 1906.
All right. Well, I'm going to go ahead and take a quick break here, guys. I will see you in the next episode. Thank you so much for watching. As always, please make sure to like, subscribe, and comment. I do hope you guys are enjoying all this. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks so much.